<laughs> the wind's gone now. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> The city. My city. I always told myself when I returned to the city I would stand on a rooftop wearing a cape so it can all flap about the place in the wind. At last, I'm living the dream. My dream. In the city. My city. It's very cold up here. I, I should have worn some undergarments. Nipples poking out through, I can just feel them. I can feel them brushing up against the material. And uh, I'm sure some kids down there are looking at me. They're starting to yell things. It is, uh, it is cold though. Yeah, it's cold, I'm, 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 I've had enough of this, I'm going. It's not even all that windy. So ninja is a thing, not a ninja, a man who calls himself a ninja. He's not a real ninja. If you do a Google search for ninja now, you only get pictures of his fucking face, not real ninjas, who famously hide their faces under a mask for effective night sneaking. Imagine how real ninjas must feel though. All of the ones searching for themselves on Google right now. Six centuries of Japanese history, art and folklore, decades of worldwide influence in popular culture, and now when you look up ninja, you get this a little lad. The first instance of a non-ninja picture of a ninja in the Google image search for ninja is this ninja Fortnite skin. Until you realise that the skin too is one of ninja the not ninja and not the not ninja ninja you were looking for. I mean I'm not saying ninja should apologise to the entire country of Japan and the world at large for effectively wrecking Google and burying the art of ninjutsu, but I think everyone would appreciate it. At least when you search for shinobi you get the real results. Nothing but video games, as it should be. Ah yes, YouTube thumbnail of a Forerunner gameplay trailer. Keep the legends alive! Keep the legends alive. Anyway, Ninja is a popular live streamer who people love because he plays Fortnite. I hate him purely because he is younger and more attractive and more popular than me. Requirements for hatred that pertain to most people in the world, so I wouldn't take it personally, Ninja. Anyway, Ninja tends to make headlines in the world of gaming whenever he says or does something. Very much like that other streamer, Dr. Disrespect, who by the way is not a qualified fucking practitioner, though by all accounts the other part of the name checks out. Ninja famously snubbed Twitch. TV to sign a deal with Microsoft's own streaming service Mixer, which people really cared about, but it's his more recent chicanery that I want to talk about today. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's really easy to research. Just type ninja in a fucking Google and the lad pops right the fuck up. If you can't be bothered to do your own research and expect me to explain my video subject to you like you're some sort of goddamn child, recent comments made by the beloved streamer have caused a bit of an uproar, an argument specifically about how to play and enjoy video games. Because those discussions are always fun and never lead to toxicity in the least. Anyway, Ninja took umbrage with the phrase, it's just a game deriding it for its frailty and explaining that not being angry over losing at a video game and shrugging off one's faltering is a mindset marked by its deficiency and decrepitude. The phrase it's just a game is such a weak mindset, said Ninja, I don't know how he sounds. You are okay with what happened, losing, imperfection of a craft. When you stop getting angry after losing, you've lost twice. There's always something to learn and always room for improvement. Never settle. As one might expect, this comment led to a big old fight punctuated by think pieces and hot takes aplenty as the world asks, are we taking video games too importantly and should we not get worked up about a loss or was David Bowie right all along when he sung It's No Game? Hey little pickles, it's me, popular Twitch streamer influencer, Cucumber Succulents. Now some of you watching may be fans of Twitch streamer influencers like me, so we thought it would be good to give you a familiar face so that some of the references can be explained to you in this, this video for grown-ups. <laughs> David Bowie was a popular 
singer-songwriter in the UK from the 60s all the way through to the 2010s. He had such hits as Space Oddity, Changes, and the track that was referenced in this video, It's No Game. His discography is available on LP vinyl, on cassette, and on CD-ROM for compact discs. And if you're a fan of Ninja, you've never heard of or seen any of those things. He was also a prolific film actor, having appeared in such movies as The Man Who Fell to Earth and Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Yes, they were making movies back then, and they didn't even have Netflix! Now, to the actual tweet itself, taken how it was written, it's wrong. I mean, that's the debate ended, folks, I've done it, I've fixed the discourse. Obviously, fucking obviously, it's not weak to look at a video game as just a video game, because... Well, it's a fucking video game. And I say this as the guy who is literally paid to get angry about video games. Video games are not climate change, or global warming, or the continued existence of Vince McMahon. Fortnite is just Fortnite. It's a colourful little shooty game about cartoon people wearing pumpkins on their head or whatever, and destroying entire buildings with candy cane pickaxes. The vast majority of people playing Fortnite, about 250 million of them for God's sake, should not get wound up and furious after losing. There's a hundred of you playing a match at any given time, only one can win, and statistically the odds are against you. Unless you're me, I'm really good at Fortnite. If you get mad at not being the one person out of a fucking hundred to get it, you're placing an incredibly high amount of pressure on yourself when, ultimately, games are predominantly meant to be entertaining fun, not a strenuous, enraging drive to be the very best. I mean, come on, it's video games. It's not Pokemon. A little under a year ago, I'm not actually very good at Fortnite, a debate roared over Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This often happens when From Software releases a game because their games have a reputation for difficulty and that brings out more than a handful of rather arrogant people who hate the idea that some folks don't play games to be challenged. And sorry, that is true and it's a valid idea. Some people don't play games just for the challenge of it. Video games are versatile, some aren't even designed with loose conditions. Some of them you just pick up fruit to sell to a rack it's all good, but so help me God, if you don't say I'm the best Animal Crossing player in the world, I'll cut your hair while you're asleep. If you merely suggest that you'd be okay with Dark Souls having an easy mode, you'll be pilloried by a contingent of hardcore get good types who will waste little time in taking great offence. You don't have to say Dark Souls needs an easy mode, you don't have to even say you want one. Merely express your lack of indignance at the vague concept of it, how its inclusion wouldn't ruin your own personal enjoyment of the thing and people will lose their shit. Similarly, the very existence of a PC mod for Sekiro that significantly eases up the challenge was treated like the return of fucking Sauron by some people. Sauron was a villainous figure in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, which was a book, and back in them days, books were made out of paper, not out of iPads. Lord of the Rings was also a popular trilogy of movies, which you also haven't seen because you're young. Never mind that mods easing up aspects of games have existed for decades, never mind that anybody modding a single player game on their own time takes nothing away from anyone else. The mod was seen by a certain contingent as offensive. Now we all know the most famous response that followed this. You cheated not only the game but yourself, cried out one hardcore gamer. You didn't grow, you didn't improve, you took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory, blah 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 blah. Outside of a contingent of truly zealous git gooders, this melodramatic and remarkably elitist comment was mocked and parodied mercilessly. However, its tone isn't all that different from Ninja saying, you are okay with what happened, losing, imperfection of a craft. I mean, yeah, most people when they lose at a video game are okay with what happened because to them it's, well, it's not a craft. A lot of the Git Gooders and Ninja himself seem very concerned with the idea of improvement. That if a player doesn't learn to get better, either thanks to too much assistance or lacking the drive to hone their talents, then something is amiss in the world. And at heart their concern isn't a bad thing. Self-improvement at anything, be it work or internal or a hobby, is great. Getting better at a video game is a positive feeling and it can make a person feel good. But the fact is, to the vast majority of the people in the world, it is just a game. And if they're going to hone a craft, they're probably not going to make that craft Fortnite. They might make a bench or something. 
It might be hard for those with a competitive mindset to appreciate, but some people do not play games to win, they play them to have a good time. There's a reason why we call it playing, it's because we're talking about games. Just games at the end of the day. That's not to say winning can't be part of the fun, I'm not so prideless that I don't like to do at least mildly respectable in a game myself, but I'm never going to be anywhere near a top player and I'm still playing games. Because the medium is so vast, diverse and versatile that simply playing a game to win at it, to beat it, to dominate the competition is not really all that important if you don't want it to be. Enjoying a video game in a way that works for you on your terms, making sure that something you buy is something you'll enjoy regardless of your performance, that's important, I think. In a world where corporate fucklords are trying to make games cost more and entertain less, it's pretty crucial to the medium. Now, there's some further important context that colours the whole debate. One thing that needs to be pointed out is that Ninja is a competitive Fortnite player. His job is to literally play games, and not just to play them, but to play them pretty damn well. His livelihood is tied up into being very, very good at Fortnite, and it's clearly this mindset that informs the way he looks at video games. When he derides the it's just a game mindset as weakness, that's an attitude born purely from the fact that the entire point of what he does is playing to win. The problem, of course, is that Ninja did not communicate this rather crucial bit of context. Something he actually does better in an excerpt of his book, he's got a book, I don't have a fucking book, where he goes into far much more detail on the matter. Here's the thing about a competitive mindset, he writes. I don't know what he sounds like. You have it or you don't. You don't have to have one to enjoy playing games, but if you're serious about being the best, your will to win is going to be the fire that keeps you fighting. Ninja explains that whenever he's been involved in a competitive endeavour, be it soccer or video games, he'd always get angry whenever teammates told him it was just a game, and he'd wonder why they would even bother playing. Would you ever say it's just a game to Tom Brady when he's playing in the Super Bowl? Of course not. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I think I would. It is just football, and it's American football at that, which makes it worse than soccer, which is already shit. I've watched your fucking Super Bowl, and as near as I can tell, American football is a game in which people stand around waiting for their turn to fall over. And the fact that they've suckered in everyone else by pushing it as a giant advertising opportunity, and we all get excited about commercials with storylines, and not even good ones like the Amber Nectar in the 90s, I think it's a ringing indictment on society that we all gather around once a year. Is it every year, Justin? Once every year, he nods, once every year, we gather around and then talk about and disseminate and get angry and uproarious and joyful and triumphant about goddamn fucking adverts. Adverts. Soccer's shit. I'd be easier on myself if I didn't have that mentality, but I do, he continues. These days, I'm better at understanding that not everyone shares that attitude, and that's okay. But you really should ask yourself, why do you really want to be the best? What keeps you going? How are you always going to challenge yourself to improve? You can practice as much as you want, but unless you're hungry, you're not really going to see the results you want. And your time would be better spent just playing games, not trying to master them. Oh! Even with this context, however, Ninja's comments are far too personally applicable for him to talk as if it's a one-size-fits-all mindset. Even among professionals, attitudes towards losing are varied. Fellow streamer Ron Wrecker, for example, expressed his view that losing does itself carry a positive element, claiming that losing helps you get better and that anyone doing anything competitive should find value in a loss. Calmly accepting a loss as a learning process rather than getting mad and improving out of spite sounds like a lot healthier of an attitude to have. In fact, many people have already pointed out that lifting up anger is the only valid response to losing, even as a professional player, is not a mentally responsible thing to do. Take it from me and my anger issues and my controllers, raging at a video game is not good for you and can wind up very expensive, as more than one trip to GameStop can attest. Hi Influencer fans, it's me again, Cucumber Succulents. Now, you may be too young to remember this, but GameStop was once a successful retail chain. <laughs> now it's not, because time came for GameStop, and it'll come for you too.
time comes for us all, children, and one day you'll be in your late thirties wondering what the fuck is going on in the world. <laughs> Bye, guys! Anger is not valueless. I'm not against getting furious over important things, but it's also one of the most dangerous and potentially poisonous emotions to have. And actions fueled by anger, historically, don't have the best track record for turning out well. And if anger is fueling you to be the best in the world, that might actually work and get you there. But once you're there, you've got to stay there and anger won't keep you there. Have you seen those Little Caesars ads about their new delivery service, those ones with Rain Wilson in them? If you haven't seen them, basically it's about the idea that Little Caesars delivery is the best idea since sliced bread. <laughs> causing the sliced bread factory to panic and implode in on itself because they're no longer the best thing. Those adverts piss me the fuck off while we're on the topic of rage because fuck the sliced bread factory. If your entire business model is predicated on being the best thing in the entire fucking world, then you deserve to fail. You need a more stable business model than being a statistical fucking anomaly. Any other business backed up by reliable sources of income essentially have infinite attempts to beat the sliced bread factory factory, but the sliced bread factory only has to fuck up once, and it's all over. That is no way to live. That is no way for the sliced bread factory to live, especially if its position is so frail that little fucking Caesars can dethrone it. Little fucking Caesars! Which is itself mostly sliced bread when you look at it. Here's the problem with being the best. It's like Fortnite. You're dropped into the world with the statistical advantage stacked against you. Not just a hundred, but millions of people vying for the title, and only one of you can be the best, which you might end up being for a time, until someone snipes your position. Millions of people have millions of chances to take your crown and you only need to fuck up once. If you've tied your identity to being the best, if your sense of satisfaction in what you do is found in being better than everyone else in the whole world, do you know who you become? You become Billy Mitchell, a man so defined by his skills as an arcade record breaker, he undid his own legacy of genuine talent by cheating in the end to retain his position. In his drive to remain the King of Kong, Mitchell resorted to cheating and disgraced himself. Now his records are wiped at Twin Galaxies and he'll go down in history as a shit, because that's what he was in the end. He was the best in the world, he was obsessed with being it, and now he's a shit. I think the main problem is that Twitch influencers don't know what the fuck they're talking about they're ignorant and their followings have given them this inflated sense of purpose and self-importance. So do follow me at Twitch TV slash Jimquisition where we're streaming such wonderful games as The Binding of Isaac, Saints Row 2 and of course Nidhogg. I've never played Nidhogg. Thank God for me.